risen. He is 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 risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. We have church today. You have joy in your heart. You can have joy in your heart because he lives, 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 he lives. You can be seated. We have been going through the book of Acts and we'll be back there today. I know that Keith and Carla. Madison, William, and Melissa, and also about six other people, uh, Keith's sister Angie from Grand Ridge, Blunchtown area, and about five or six more has gone with them. I think there's a total of 12 over there, might be 13, but they have, uh, I looked at my phone a while ago because they, uh, he told me that yesterday afternoon they served 1,100 hamburgers. That's a lot of hamburgers. They cooked 400 pounds of French fries for, for dinner last night. Now, for breakfast yesterday morning, I don't know how many hundreds of eggs that they served and, and grits and those things like that. And so this morning, they are serving some more. Then they'll have worship there where they are at. The church that they are at still does not have electricity. In the area that they are in, it's still spotted with electricity. And so they'll serve a... Um, uh, a, a dinner today or a lunch, whatever, so about three or four in the afternoon, it'll be pulled pork sandwiches with that that is going with that. Then they'll get it cleaned up, and then they will be back sometime tonight, probably about midnight or about 1 o'clock in the morning, maybe 2, because some of them have to go to work tomorrow. Pray for them, all right? Uh, they are doing s some awesome things over there. And they'll come back and they'll be tired. They are sleeping on uh, the pews in the church with a, uh, with a generator, with a fan blowing across them. And so they are, uh, they need your prayers, but they are having a good time. If you ever go and do that, right, Cindy? You regret going? Not at all. And so we just know that God is so good. This morning we want to speak to you about trusting in Jesus Christ and to keep trusting in Jesus Christ and to keep trusting in Jesus Christ even when the devil turns up the heat and turns up the persecution greater than you have ever seen it because we go through times in this life that the devil tries to intimidate us but we have used the verse often we all know it God does not give us the spirit of fear does not give us the spirit of intimidation but one of power and of love and of a sound mind. But I can tell you, and you know it, that the devil can really turn up the heat. He can turn that thing up real high. It's like these fish cookers, you know, that's got these high-pressure gas down there, and it just turns up and turns up, and you just begin to cry out and say it's enough. But when the devil comes in like a flood... God's got enough firepower to back him down. And it all works according to our faith. What do we believe? Our faith doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to hold on to Christ because Christ is going to help us where we lack if we got some faith and willing to trust him. It comes today, this message today comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through verse number 31. Prior to this, he has risen. Pentecost happened. That baptism in the Holy Spirit happened on the day of Pentecost because Jesus had told his disciples, the Comforter is coming, the Helper is coming, the Holy Spirit is coming. He used several words to describe him, but he says, when I am departed and I sat down at my Father's right hand, if you'll keep my commandments, I'll pour God's Holy Spirit out on you. Now, they were connected with this powerful Holy Spirit through stories in the Old Testament. 
One of the stories that young men love to hear, maybe women too, was that of Samson. That the Holy Spirit would come upon him at different seasons of his life. One day he and his mother are going and dad are going and this lion roared up against them and he just went out there and killed it with his bare hands. One day he picked up the jawbone of a donkey, bleached dry, picked it up and killed over a thousand Philistines. But he always played with sin. And so he played with sin and dibbled and dabbled in and out with God and with favor of God. And at the close of this message today, we're going to get to the point to where we're going to say we want to get all in with Jesus. Everybody just say to yourself, not loud to your neighbor, I wanted you to talk to yourself, I need to get all in. You need to get all in. I need to get all in with Jesus. Your neighbor can hear you and it just impresses them, but I want you to impress God with what's taking place in your heart. All in. Samson flirted with the devil, flirted with the devil, and finally it cost him his eyes, and they put out his eyes. Two weeks ago, we had a missionary that spoke here. You can go back and get it off the archives, YouTube, and he preached a message on remember. God says remember. Down in the jail cell where he was grinding wheat, and they was making sport of Samson, they brought him out and set him in their biggest temple, their Smithsonian or their Congress house, whatever. They all come to make sport of him. And it was such an architectural thing that the whole building was built on these two big main pillars right in the middle. And they, and they were just far enough apart that he could just put his hands on both of them. And he told the guy, he's blind now, he got chains and, chains and shackles. He said, just put me there so I can feel them. And then he's got there and he says, oh God, remember me. And you can go back and listen to the message, but that word remember says this. He broke it down. He says, Lord, remember the initial calling you had on my life. What you really intended for me at the beginning. (laughs) Please, oh God, remember that God intended the church to be something more than what we are now. We aren't near what the book of Acts church is was not near and I want God to remember me but there Samson says oh God remember me remember the initial calling you had on my life just one more time oh God and he said I don't care what you do with me you can let me die with them and so we are called in the book of Romans chapter number 12 Paul says I urge you I beseech you I plead with you dear Christian brothers and sisters that you present your bodies a living sacrifice Live, but live dead. You're totally in putty in God's hands. You're total putty in God's hands. Samson says, Lord, remember me one more time. God did. And on that day when he died, he had killed thousands and thousands and thousands of Philistines. But that whole amphitheater that day, that whole Colosseum was filled more than they had ever faced in battle when he pushed down the walls and they all fell. Remember what you called me to do. Remember the calling of God upon your life. Everybody's afraid that God's going to call you to be a missionary. What would you like if God would just do for you what he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Get you a government job, high-paying job. They weren't prophets. They didn't write no book in the Bible. Joseph didn't write no book in the Bible. He just had a high-paying government job, number two in the world. In fact, he was more powerful than Pharaoh because he knew God. But anyway, Pharaoh said, I still got the big ring, and you just got the ring right under me. But really, Joseph is the one that had the goods. Are y'all tired of just living mediocre lives for Jesus? I am. 
cuts me down to my core. And so on the day of Pentecost, they are there and they're praying. Jesus says, but you will receive dynamic power. Dynamic the power. The same power that you saw me do life in. This power isn't going to exempt you from trouble. It's going to bring trouble your way. But understand this. You will see the glory of God. God wants us not to be exempt from trouble, but he wants to shine. Shine wants us to shine through trouble. Everybody say shine. My shoes aren't shining. Of course, they're not military shoes either. Shine. God wants it to shine. So there on the day of Pentecost, they had spent 10 days, and they're praying. And then when the Holy Spirit fell, and then after it fell, they began to speak with tongues and glorify God and tell everybody, 120 of them, there was more than 13 different languages represented at Jerusalem. And each one was speaking out a different language they had never learned. And so they're speaking the wonderful works of God. And then when people began to make fun of them, Peter stood up and just began to preach. Y'all killed Jesus. This is real short condensed. But God raised him from the dead. And that's why the Holy Spirit is here because he is seated at the Father's right hand. And now he has poured out the Holy Spirit. And he was one man when he walked on the earth. But now he will be Jesus and everybody who's filled with the Holy Spirit and who wants to walk in the same power. Can you imagine a world filled with 10 million Jesuses? Maybe 70 people. Have you took a count yet today, Jeffrey? How many is in this room? 80? What would Walcala County be if there was 80 Jesuses walking through Walcala County? Doing everything that Jesus did, speaking with the same wisdom. Say it's not possible. It's possible. It's possible. 80 people. That means next Sunday there would be 160 here. That means next Sunday there would be 160 in the first service and 160 in the second service. But what it means most of all is the person that you want to affect and touch their life, they're going to get a glimpse of what Jesus is like, and they're going to see sin broke off of their life. They're going to say, there's hope. Freddie, do you want Jesus? I know you do. You don't have to be here. You're graduated. You could have slept in bed, and your dad brings you to church, doesn't he? Somebody brings you to church, and then they take you back. You're here by choice. May God remember you. Remember you in a special way with the powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit where you'll die to yourself and live for Jesus Christ. May every one of you in this room die to ourselves and live to Jesus Christ. We have the text today. They had prayed for this lame man in the name of Jesus There was a reason this man never got healed when Jesus was here. There's a reason. He was taken there and laid daily. Now, I don't know if he was taken there 365 days out of the year, but when the Bible says daily, that means almost every day he was there. He was a well-known figurehead there, and he was a voice figurehead because he couldn't walk. But every time somebody walked in, how many of y'all noticed people up here at Crawfordville Road in Capital Circle saying, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. This man was laying there saying, give me, give me, give me, and he couldn't get up and go get a job. Cripple, cripple, cripple from his mother's womb. Everybody, and they got an earful from him every time that they went into the temple, and they says, he says, alms, and they knew, and they, and they should have helped him. And, and, but Peter says, I don't have no money, but what I do have, I give you. I am filled with the same Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ was filled with. And I have been commissioned. I have been knighted. (laughs) Wouldn't you like to live in England and have the queen just put a sword on you and make you a knight? Well, Jesus wants to make you, puts the sword of the Holy Spirit upon you and makes you powerful like him. He does. He wants to so fill you with himself. So fill you with himself, with Jesus, when the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, and then we begin to converse with him, speak with him, read the Bible, pray, and then just listen for a while. 
they were in trouble because they had prayed for this man and he had been healed. And, and because of they're telling people about the resurrection. So at 3 o'clock one afternoon when they went into the temple, they said, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And he got up and he began to walk and leap. And so they bring them to trial. And they says, can you tell us by what means this man? They couldn't deny it. And Peter preached to them, Jesus, whom you killed. Now, if you go back to the book of Matthew, and they, they, these 70 people, they didn't say Jesus is dead because they, they, they told the story, his disciples had come stole him. If that was a really a true story, they would say, and y'all stole him. But they couldn't do that. They couldn't pull it off on them because they said, no, no, no. They didn't want to bring the subject up. Why? Because it was common knowledge that they paid the soldiers off. They could have said, no, you paid them money. We got witnesses that can tell them, you are lily-livered chickens, and you paid them money to keep their mouth shut. You killed him. The Bible says they, could, they were intimidated. If you will fill yourself with Jesus... We are not wanting to intimidate the world, but we are wanting to be so full of God that they cannot answer back. Not a legitimate answer. But then they threaten them. Don't preach no more. The disciples knew their threats were real. How many of y'all have got weaknesses? I'm all, I'm all, am I the only one? These disciples have got all kinds of weaknesses. They got all this pride, and, and Peter's got this thing about he, he sometimes is in and sometimes he's not in. Some of them's covetous, that's all of this. But God come to work all of that out. They got weaknesses, but God wants to overcome all the weaknesses in their life and make them firebrands, powerful witnesses. And so they threaten them, and so the first thing they do, they go back and they tell their brothers and sisters, that's in Christ. Maybe the 120, maybe more than 120. But they tell them what has happened. And they say, now listen, we need to have a prayer meeting. We need to go to God. So let's read Acts chapter 4, just verse number 24. And so when they heard, we're going to read this from two translations. The New King James and then the New Living Translation. And when they heard this, they raised their voice to God with one accord, whether it's 120 or whether it's 240, whether it's 2,000. They says, Lord, you are God who made the heaven and the earth and all that is in them. New Living Translation says, and when they heard the report, the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. It says, O sovereign, everybody say sovereign. That means God who is totally in charge. We serve a God that's totally in charge. They got right down to the crux of it. Oh, sovereign Lord who created the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything. That, that's who we serve. They knew that they are praying to a sovereign creating God. A God that wants to help them and be their help. Psalms 24 verses 1 and 2 the earth is the Lord's and its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he founded it upon the sea and established it upon the waters. God is totally in charge. And so they're praying. They know their weaknesses. They know they need courage. They know they need God to show up and make himself known in the church services they have. Wants God to show up not, even, not only in the church services when they are in the temple, but when they go to Walmart. When they go to the same yard, when they go to the same yard trailer, when they go to Myra Jeans, when they go to family, they want God to show up and to show out. And when they begin to pray and they begin to share Jesus, they want the Holy Spirit there touching people's hearts. And whenever they leave, they want the power of the Holy Spirit touch, still touching them whenever they leave. You can't get away from Holy Spirit. You that are believers here today, Holy Spirit's in your business and he is saying you need to know Jesus more and more and more. He is saying hear the words that I told Paul to preach and to write down everlasting living words. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Totally, wholly, completely delivered unto God for his reason. 
for his service. He's not going to call you to be a preacher. Not likely. He's just looking to infiltrate this world. He's looking to infiltrate this world with speakers, people that will share the light and the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's wanting to do that to our schools. He's wanting to do that to the state of Florida. He's wanting to do that in Wakulla County school system, but he's wanting people to be light, light, light. Sovereign God. Daniel chapter number 2. Daniel knew that God was sovereign. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He knew what the dream was, but he had had a snow job run over him by his counselors, professors. He had been had a snow job put on him, and he couldn't prove them to be wrong. But he had this dream, and he called everybody in together, and he says, I've had a dream, and I want to know the dream and the interpretation. They said, oh, God, Nebuchadnezzar, just tell us a dream, and we'll give you the interpretation. He says, no, Daniel chapter 2. He says, no, 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 not going to tell you because you're just biding time. And so when they couldn't do it, he went into a fit of rage, and he told his people, kill out all the wise men. So when they got to Daniel's house in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't have Daniel in there. And they said, well, what's going on? They told him. He said, oh, wait a minute. Give us 24 hours. So he shared it with his friends, and then they prayed. And during the night, God revealed to Daniel the exact, exact dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. He also told him what it meant. This dream was a big tall image like a man but the head was of gold chest here was of silver and and then we had bronze that was next and then down to the legs it was steel and then the feet and toes were steel and clay mingled together and God told Daniel what this is about this is about one kingdom about another kingdom another kingdom and another kingdom and so Daniel goes into Nebuchadnezzar and tells him the dream and then the interpretation but when God told Daniel this he says oh God you are a sovereign God everybody say sovereign to yourself he's going God's getting into your business today he says you raise up kings and you pull down kings Today and every time that we pray, we are praying to a sovereign God who makes kingdoms and pulls them down. Kingdoms pulls them down. Great man of God, great woman of God, great man of God, great child of God, daughter of God, son of God. He, he, can, he will empower you, but he's not going to pull you down if you'll be faithful to him. He'll take his spirit from you if you begin to, if you begin to think that the Holy Spirit is yours to show out. Oh, sovereign God, they knew who they were praying to. Do you know who you're praying to? Oh, sovereign God, who created the heavens and the earth. Verses 24 through 28. And when they heard the report, all the believers lifted up their voices together in prayer and says, Oh, sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything that is in them. You spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why do the nations rage? They're quoting Psalms number 2. They're quoting Psalms number 2. They're praying scripture. They've got all of this power. Why do the nations rage? And why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time in futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. Let me just stop right there. In fact, just let me just put it in my, my words. You can go back and read it. But he says, in fact, in Jerusalem, the day that Jesus Christ was born, Herod just put, wanted to kill him, wipe him out. Two years later, he found out about the plan, and he killed all the babies. But God just had a way of preserving him. And then <laughs> Jesus come, Herod, Pontius Pilate, the rulers, the 70 people out there, they all conspired together saying, let's make a plan, let's kill Jesus. And they're praying, saying, Sovereign God, the devil's making all of these plans, but you're able to outsmart every plan of the devil. The devil's going to throw up a lot of places and a lot of things in your life to try to get you to turn away from following Jesus. A lot of diseases, a lot of sickness, a lot of everything else. 
but, but God is bigger than any plan the devil's got. He wants to put so much discouragement in your life that you'll just want to throw in the towel. That's what they were trying to do to Peter, James, John, the whole 120 and the whole 5,000 that had come believers. If they could just wipe out this little group right at the beginning, the rest of those followers are just going to just dribble apart and just fall apart. People are watching you. If they can get them 12 or get those 11, they voted one in after Judas killed himself. And then it was 120. If they can get rid of the 12, the 11, the 120, then the rest of them are just going to fall apart. But people are looking at you, and God wants to build you up. And so they're praying to a God who knows everything, omniscient God. Lord, they could, they could not outwit you. You knew that was going to take place. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10. God's telling the nation of Israel through Isaiah, Remember the former things of old. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I declare the end from the beginning, from ancient times, that things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, I will do all of my pleasure. Sovereign Lord, omniscient God who knows everything. You, what's taking place today, you saw this. You saw this. Didn't take you by surprise. But we're coming to you. About to finish. Natasha, would you come? Verses 29, 30, and 31. After they prayed, this is what they said. Now, Lord... Look on their threats. They know their weaknesses. I spoke about your weaknesses at the beginning. Peter knows he's been one that has denied Jesus. In fact, at the Sea of Galilee, after Jesus had rose from the grave, and Peter's got so discouraged, he's taken up fishing again. And Jesus shows up, and he does another miracle with the fishes. And that's the last time Peter picked up the net that we know of. And there they had a meal together. And then Jesus begins to do real restoration into Peter's life. Do you love me? Yes, Lord. Second time, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Third time, do you love me? And they begin to ask Peter like, yes, Lord, you know I love you. It's really like that way. When you go back and read John, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He says, feed my sheep. And then he says, follow me. This, this path that you're going on is going to cost you more than you know of. When you were younger, Peter, you, done, you made your own decisions, everything. But when you get older, somebody else is going to gird you and take you where you don't want to go. He understood what he meant. We don't know, but John did also. Because when John wrote this, he says, Jesus spoke that, telling Peter about what kind of death he was going to die. History has it that Peter was crucified in Rome upside down. He was setting him up. And so Peter and the rest of them, Lord, you know there are threats and you know my weakness. I've got weaknesses, you've got weaknesses, but God's got enough power in the Holy Spirit to just smack your weakness down into the grave. It comes through the Holy Spirit. It comes through the Holy Spirit. It comes through opening the door and Jesus says, I'll come in and I will have supper with you. Supper with us means... We're going to read his word, and, and, and then we're going to meditate on it. We're going to pray, and then we're going to be quiet, and he's going to speak back to us. And then we're going to be filled with the Spirit, and then the Spirit is going, Holy Spirit, who is Jesus on this earth, manifesting Jesus on this earth? Jesus said, I'll give you another comforter like me. You just can't see him, but if you'll hear him, he'll speak to you just like I'm speaking to you. When I leave this earth, I'm getting an upgrade. I'm going to heaven. I'm getting an upgrade. But as long as I'm here, I want for God to...
to remember me and I want to remember also the initial call he put upon my life when he says prepare for ministry I want to stir up people to serve Jesus to be filled with the Holy Spirit and I want to do it to the best of the ability that I will let him put in me and I firmly believe I firmly believe we will see the book of Acts alive. It's according to our desires, our passions, our prayers. We pull down strongholds. We pull down fears. We pull down doubts. We pull down anger. We get our minds totally in control. Lord, look on your service and grant to your servants that with all boldness we may speak your word by stretching out your hand and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, just like another fresh Pentecost. I believe that we today need a fresh Pentecost from the sovereign God who can see down to the future right where we're at now. Jesus, it is spoken of Jesus by the writer of Hebrews. Jesus come and walked in our shoes. He was tempted in every way, just like people picked up rocks three times in the book of John 8 and John number 10 in the temple, want to stone Jesus. He knew what it was like to be stared down. He knew what it was like to be in his hometown in Luke chapter number 4. And after he preached in the church, they just grabbed him by the arm and took him to the city. It was built on this big hill, and they wanted to throw him over. And we just don't see how he got away, but the Bible says... He turned and walked through the midst of them. The devil can't take you out until God's finished with you. And whenever we are, God's finished with us and we've done, some leave earlier than others, but they, they make their mark, a big mark. Grant to your servants that with all boldness we can preach. You're, you see, they're, they're trying to put us down. Jesus had spoken to them at least five times. As I'm getting ready to do this, speak this message, at least on different occasions, not quoted in five times in other books about the same occasion, but on five different occasions. If anyone desires to come after me, you must deny yourself and take up your cross. You've got to forget about yourself yourself that's the biggest problem in this world is our self it's just our self second corinthians chapter 12 verse number 10 Paul speaks this. He says, For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, with insults, with hardships, with persecutions and calamities. The more these things come to me, the harder I lean on Jesus because when I'm weak, then I am strong. I just say, I'm trusting you, Jesus. I'm trusting you. James 4, verse 7 and 8. Therefore, James says, Submit to God. Wow. Peter, and when they're praying, they're saying, Lord, we're submitting to you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Every one of us in this room has had some double-minded activity in our life. We're going with you, Jesus. We're fired up. We're fired up. We're fired up. And about three weeks later, we ain't no different than what we was before we got fired up, fired up. We've got a double-minded attitude in our life. God has richly given us all things that too we can enjoy. We've got a life. God wants to, us to have a life. But while we're living the life, he wants us to be fired up. What does it mean to be fired up, not to be double-minded? 
That means if we were to get on spiritual scales today, Ben, come here, please. This is embarrassing. that much taller than I am and he's only 16 what yep still growing spiritually we should never quit growing I was in the hospital room when he was born Olivia's the oldest I held her I held Ben sat down. I mean, I'm not going to attempt to pick you up and do like I did then. Oh, you're so cute, so cute, so cute. All four of my grandkids are cute. If we could get a spiritual examination today, From the time he was born to one year later, he had already, he, he, he's not, he's walking. Time is a year old, he's walking. But spiritually speaking, we should never reach a place in our life that we're not growing. You may not be able to do it physically, but spiritually you can pull down strongholds. So if we could take a spiritual examination of our life, if we will fellowship with the Bible, memorizing scripture, and you don't have to memorize it verbatim, but it helps sometimes if you do. Uh, I read some now more uh, with New Living Translation and New King James and English Standard Version because you just need to make sure that you're really getting the big picture of what God is saying. They got in trouble, but God wants to raise up warriors. At early age, middle-aged, all through life, God's wanted to take up something in our life. We are serving a sovereign God who created everything. We are serving a God who has seen the future where you're at right today. If there were 80 people in this room and all 80 of us turned in to be just like Jesus, Wakala County wouldn't stand a chance, and I wish that is what would happen. I wish that would happen. All of my weaknesses I'm giving to Jesus. So I'm asking you today, everyone in this room, all of your weaknesses, will you give them to Jesus? Every insecurity, everything that pulls you back down later on, and you say, I'm sorry, Jesus, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are you willing to give them to Jesus? It says, when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were standing. Then they went out and preached the word with boldness, and we'll get to it later. But it got so powerful, the work of God, they just laid people in the street, and people, Peter walked by. Peter wasn't the only one. Stephen, Philip, scores of others. Barnabas, the list goes on and on. Pastor Jeffrey spoke and it read off a list at the end of the book of Romans. It was a long list of names. Paul says they're, they're awesome. I'm asking everyone that's in this room. If you're wanting to be in the presence of God and receive a real transformation in your life, I ask you to stand and I want you to begin to pray. Some of you can come stand down on the front, but God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit also. Transformation. No higher calling in this life than it is a life serving Jesus Christ. 